effectively there's they, they've got to bring people with them Dan Stevens the uh, I was a soldier in the parachute regiment after I left the army I joined the fire and rescue service I ended up as the Chief Fire Officer of Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service. I was the Chief for seven years. I then went over to Melbourne to become the Chief of the Melbourne Metropolitan Fire Brigade. I stayed there for about 18 months and then I came back to the UK and I'm now the Chief Fire and Rescue Advisor to the Welsh Government. At the risk of sounding I think effectively there's, they, they've got to bring people with them and I think it's really important for a leader to be consistent and they've got to be trustworthy in order to take people with you people have got to believe in you they've got to they've got to have faith in you and I think for me I feel that there is a lot to be said for that leading by example where you are not asking people to do something that they know that you are not capable of doing yourself. And even if you can't do it as effectively as they might be able to, you know, you can you can let them know that. You know, you can not in any way make out that somehow you don't. Uh, you can just do it all yourself. You know, it's 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 to be. It's to empower you, the people that you work with, to if you like to set the set the strategic effect but leave it to them to go and deliver that and support them in doing it, no matter how difficult personally that might be for you to cede control. It's that empowerment through trust, I guess, you know, with with, with ownership comes responsibility. It's, you know, look, I will give you the uh, I will give you the autonomy to go and do that because I've got trust in you, but you have to deliver. The step up from private soldier to lance corporal it's quite a substantial shift because the you go from having very little responsibility to a fair degree of resp uh, responsibility particularly in the operational sphere and the same is true in the fire and rescue service probably the biggest step up is that step from being a firefighter up to a, a crew manager or, or a leading firefighter as it was when i was um when I was progressing through the ranks, going from firefighter through into that supervisory management role, there are many officers at that level who really struggle with the fact that once you take that step, you're no longer there to be popular. You know, you're not there to win popularity contests. You are there to to do a job, to achieve an outcome. And I would always say, as as chief officer, when I'd be doing many many station visits, the first thing I would say to the to the officers in charge on the shift is that they were my representatives out on the out on the fire station. It is that balance around recognising that you are you're no longer there to be one of the team. You are there to lead that team, and as a result, you know you have to learn to say no. You have to learn to to make difficult and sometimes sometimes unpopular decisions, and that's that is actually much easier the further up in my experience the further up the organization that you get because you are actually detached or more detached from that sort of reality on the ground of some of those decisions some of the some of the hardest decisions i had to make were those as a as a junior officer because it was the whites of the eyes where i was telling people who i was in a very intimate environment with for extended periods of time you know i was telling them no and saying we're gonna you're gonna do something that i knew that they didn't particularly want to do and it you know wasn't going to be popular with them that is the real sort of hard yards leadership at the at that sort of at that level which is you know that's really difficult because actually you don't have the experience often in those circumstances you know you've developed you develop that experience over time and ultimately you end up as I did as the chief and you've got all of that experience but actually when you're first starting out on that journey you know a lot of it's there'll be some of it be around your training but also some it's about instinct and actually probably your values it's about you know what's right it's about doing the right thing it 
early on in my leadership career, I would probably show my emotions more than I probably should do. And, and I guess that is a... That is probably, in one respect, it's possibly not a bad thing to show that something is, is important to you and, and, and it means something. But I think a really important facet of leadership is, is, that, is that calmness, is that being measured, because that inspires confidence. And if something is, you know, is really, is really getting to you, I think it, it is, if you are able to, to not let that show and to maintain a, a composed and a measured posture in the face of something which is you're far from happy with, then I think that projects a, a calming influence on, on those around you. So as, as much as you, you, you might almost feel as an expectation that you, would, that you would show real emotion, I think if you can use your judgment to, to when you do that, because of course, when you choose to do that, then in in, in a measured and a, and a deliberate way, then it's likely to have far more effect than if it is something that you would do more often and almost as a as a matter of routine. Another mistake I've made, I guess, if that first example was more say at the at the supervisory or the, the tactical level, I think at the at the strategic level. I think mistakes I've made in the past, I've probably just been a bit too honest. And maybe, particularly in the political environment, it may have been better for me to be more circumspect. On reflection, it may have been better just not to have commented at all. Again, it comes back to this judgment around what is the expectation, the wider, who's the audience here. You know, you've got to make those judgments, but... You know, I do think that there have been occasions where I probably have been just a little bit too honest, where it may have been better to just be more, to be more circumspect. But you've got to judge that and you've got to judge the environment at the time and try and anticipate. So what does that look like in two, three or four years time? Because often as strategic leaders, you know, you are playing a long game. You've got to be yourself. Do not try to be something that you're not. You have to be authentic because if you're not, people will see through that very, very quickly. So first and foremost, you know, it's about being true to yourself and, and look, it's it's about doing what's right. I, I do strongly believe in values-based leadership. You know, organisationally, there will be a clear, there should be a, a clear mission, a clear strategy a clear set of objectives that you are required to deliver so you'll have some high level principles or high level outcomes if you like that you know you need to uh, that you need to deliver but the trick really is it's not so much about the the destination it's the journey you know, it's about how you it's about how you support your your team to deliver those outcomes and i, I go back to the points that i made earlier it's about you know, if you have to, it is about leading by example. And I'm not saying that you do that all the time, but maybe at the beginning of the journey, maybe there is that little bit of having to show people, actually, I'm not asking you to do something I can't do myself here. Because that's about, it's about setting standards. You know, as a, as a junior officer, I would often, I would go out and, for example, standard tests is a, it's a fairly fairly mundane routine of testing equipment but I would go out with the watch and I would do the standard tests with them if for no reason and it showed that I had a not only did I have the hands-on ability to deploy the equipment but I also had an in-depth understanding of how it worked and and what I was actually saying is I expect this from you all you know, if I can do this on top of everything else that I've got to do, you know, I expect that you should be able to do it too. Because actually, that's your primary role is to be proficient at it. I have all the other managerial issues that I have to, to deal with as well. Not say that you do that all the time, you don't do that continually. But it's probably not a bad thing to just put those markers down. It's a bit of that visible 
showing the the showing the way if you like setting the standard and then that allows you to to step back and to give people uh, to to give them that trust and that they will get out and uh, and they will do what it is that you've uh, thought that they will reach the standards that you've set for them and i think if you are you are consistent in 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 how you do that then i think that uh, that sets a good it sets an expectation that You've set a standard, but then if they don't reach it, you know, you'll do all you can to help them and, and, and assist them in attaining the standard. But ultimately, if you know if they either they can't or they won't, then they need to be in no doubt that you'll do what you have to do. Because I come back to the the point I made earlier on. You know, we're not uh, you're not there to win a popularity contest. You're there to deliver an outcome.